Well, my first guest tonight is a passionate advocate for free speech, and she also knows more than most about what it's like to be trolled online. I'd love to say that Caitlyn Jenner joins me now, uh, I think from Hollywood. Caitlyn, how are you? You know what, Pierce, I'm doing just fine. Actually, very excited to see what's going to happen to social media now that uh, Elon Musk is in control of Twitter. I think it's going to be very interesting in the future. Actually, if I could, and this is going to take a little while for social media to kind of get used to this, the Elon Musk here. It's kind of almost like when Live Golf came in uh, mm -hmm. to the golf world, the PGA kind of had a monopoly going here. Well, social media has had a monopoly on, um, you know, the far left. And, and finally, Elon Musk came in and he wants a free speech platform for everybody, the left, the right. And uh, I think it's going to be good. And I think it's going to really shake up social media. Um, you look at Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, it was reported last week he lost like $100 million, or $100 billion, whatever it was, in value of uh, Meta, because he's been so far left for so long and a voice for the left um, uh, that people are, are leaving and going someplace else. So this is going to take some time to figure out exactly how it's going to work out. But I think it's going to be very good in the long run uh, for social media. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And I, I think Elon Musk, you know, he's proven himself to be a, a genius who likes to challenge orthodoxy in terms of how we think, whether it's electric cars, whether it's SpaceX, his extraordinary uh, space company, which does all these Starlink satellites as well, you know, and now this. I think he's the right guy because... As I keep trying to explain to people, he's not even someone who identifies as right-wing or conservative. You know, he's a Bernie Sanders fan. He's spent most of his life, actually, positioning himself politically to the left. And yet it's the people on the left who have gone so far left, in my opinion, that it makes people who are on the centre or maybe even slightly centre-right look like they're far-right by comparison. That's, that's been the problem. No, Elon Musk, I think, uh, is going to be very good for Twitter. I, I have met him on a couple of occasions. Um, actually, I got a, uh, I'm into aviation, and I got a private tour of SpaceX where they, uh, down at Hawthorne, where they build the rockets. And uh, he gave me an hour tour. We sat in his office. He was wonderful. Um, and I think he's, he is a big thinker. I mean, when you say you're going to start SpaceX, a space company, and you're going up, uh, you know, against NASA, uh, that takes a lot. You know, mm -hmm. that takes some pretty big ones there. And uh, I think he's going to do the same thing here. The first thing he's starting up with is he's going to make it a, a subscription um, where he has Twitter blue. Uh, I think one of the reasons why when he first got in and started looking into Twitter, uh, he saw that there were so many accounts that you couldn't verify and he wants to be able to verify it so he's going to put up for 1995 you can get a verified account on, on twitter blue and i think that's going to be very good you're you're going to get rid of a lot of the junk that's out there um he's immediately f started firing all the top executives in fact i think it was today he completely fired the entire board of twitter uh bringing his people in actually he's bringing in a lot of technical people from uh uh, from Tesla, and he's going to shake this thing up. I think it's going to be so interesting to watch, and I think it's going to be nothing but good. You know, I've been on Twitter. I've been shadow banned. In fact, interesting, uh, I was shadow banned the day it was announced that I joined Fox News as a contributor. Mm. I immediately got well, it's shadow funny, banned. It's funny you say, yeah, say that, that Caitlin, because oddly, i would noticed over the last few months my Twitter following... Uh, number had gone down quite s slowly but steadily for months and months and months. I was losing followers. But in the last two weeks, since it looked like Elon Musk was basically going to be taking it over, I've suddenly gained all the followers I lost in two weeks. Now, it might be coincidence. It might be, I don't know, they were taking away bots or something right. like that. Or it might just be that from the moment it looked like Elon Musk was actually going to run Twitter. A lot of the people doing this kind of shadow banning, which for people who don't know, they put you know, stuff in the technology which basically reduces right. the visibility of people they perceive to be conservative or maybe anti-woke or whatever it may be. Certainly in my case, it would be anti-woke, not conservative. But I, I smell a rat here. And I think you probably have experienced similar stuff, right? I've experienced the same thing. 
Uh, you know, here's a little trivia. Uh, I broke a Guinness Book of World Records on Twitter. When, when I came out, and the, I was not on Twitter, when I came out uh, and was on the cover of uh, Vanity Fair, uh, I immediately, when that came out, I immediately opened up my Twitter account. And I broke the world record for a broken set of Guinness Book of World Records for the fastest to one million followers. Um, Barack Obama had it at five hour, five hours and, and like 20 minutes. Uh, I did it in four hours and uh, two minutes <laughs> from zero to one million. I, would expect, I got a plaque I, inside my I would house expect for that. nothing else from an Olympian yeah, gold medal would, champion. Yes. And so... Um, yeah, I've been with Twitter for a very long time, and yes, I've been shadow banned. I have also noticed in the last couple of weeks, uh, things have started to change. Uh, uh, your amount of engagements is going up. Mm. Um, I think it's, honestly, I think this is going to be good, not just for Twitter, but what, for what are the, if you were Elon social Musk, media. Uh, okay, if you were Elon, and you're looking at all the problems of Twitter, and I think we all know what they are. There are way too many anonymous bots and they can influence, I think, p political uh, issues in a manipulative way, which could potentially then manipulate votes and therefore elections. I think that remains a big concern. Also, this the amount of abuse, you know, racism, harassment, death threats and so on is still there. I, I see it, you know, every now and again, rear its ugly head. Yeah. Um, where for you, where is the line? So it's a very interesting debate, this, about where the line is for free speech. Where is free speech... And where for you, who's been on the subject oh, of a boy. lot of abuse and trolling, where for you is the line that gets crossed? Well, first of all, I think that's in Elon Musk's hands right now and the people that he brings in. He has to bring in some really good, competent people to be able to run Twitter. Because obviously, hate speech shouldn't be anywhere. Um, it shouldn't be online. It shouldn't be anywhere. And there is that fine line between hate speech and something that's either true or maybe not quite as, you know, true. Um, it's almost like, for me, it's almost like I, I get a lot of jokes about me. I've been roasted and this and everything. And there is that fine line between a funny joke that is really true, okay, and a funny joke that is, like, hateful. Mm. To me, that always, I don't want hateful jokes against me. I want funny jokes against me. And you can use me, and I love as good a laugh as anybody. But it's going to be the same thing with Twitter. Um, where is that fine line? And I think that he's going to have to have very competent people in there uh, to be able to find out where that fine line is. Well, it's interesting and, that you mentioned comedy um, because he, he actually tweeted, comedy is legal again. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I responded by tweeting back two laughing emojis and a thumbs up, which he then, he then liked. Yeah. Very quickly. So I and being liked by Elon Musk on Twitter at the moment is a bit like getting a papal blessing from the Pope if you're a Catholic. Um, you know, it's like the ultimate validation. Yeah. Um, and it shows, of course, his own in incredible engagement in Twitter. I mean, he's all over it. He reads everything, he, he sees everything, he's firing out tweets left, yeah, right, he and does. center. I don't know how he does it. The guy's got a million things going on in his life. You know, he's sending rockets up to space. He's, uh, you know, developing the electric car, which nobody said they could really do and do it right. Mm. And he did, and still, Tesla's the best electric car on the market. SpaceX uh, is just killing. The only way uh, any, you know, astronauts can get to the space station is now SpaceX. NASA doesn't have any way to get him there. Right. So he's done an amazing job, and I think he'll do the same thing with... With Twitter, it's going to take a little time to work it out, but I think Elon Musk is really good at getting good people in the right place. Yeah, I agree. And if they're not working out, he's afraid to. He's not. He's not. You know, afraid to fire somebody. No, no, I agree. If well, what would he you gets do? The right people in place. But he said today, if he had a, a, I think he had a dime or a dollar for everyone who's uh, asked him what he's going to do about Donald Trump. He'd be very rich, which, of course, he's already very rich. He's got $235 billion. But what would you do about Donald Trump? Would you let him back on the platform? Oh, of course. Yeah, why? it's a free speech platform now. Of course I would. Of course I would. You know what? It's interesting how the left is already starting to come after him. Just uh, on, uh, what was it, just today, uh, of course, a, a Senator Chris Murphy 
a Democrat from Connecticut, okay, on this Monday, uh, said that they have to review Twitter because um, um, for the Committee of Foreign Investment. Why? Because the Saudis, a lot of people don't know this, the Saudis have big in, been big investors in Twitter for many, many years. I think they hold about $1.89 a billion dollars in investment in Twitter. Most people don't know that, but now all of a sudden the left's gonna come after and say, hey, we have to check out these investments. Saudi Arabia's been around for a long time with Twitter. They're the number two uh, stockholder behind uh, Elon Musk, but the left's gonna take their shots. Um, I think Elon Musk is a very sharp guy. I mean, my argument, I about, gonna, um, my argument about Trump has been from the start of this, is if you're going to ban Donald Trump, you can't then allow, as they've allowed, Vladimir Putin to retain his Twitter account, Taliban leaders, the supreme leader of Iran. There's no consistency there. Right. You know, you cannot allow no people like that to have accounts and say Donald Trump should be banned, in my, in my opinion. It's not a question of being right or left or any of these things. It's a question of balance and consistency. Yeah. And I do think the one thing Elon Musk is going to do, he's going to bring in a kind of a, a, a group of people from all walks of life, all political persuasions, and they're going to be the ones who form a consensus about who should be banned. Because there are some people who I think probably should be banned. You know, if you're going to be a, a, a yes. spewing, you know, racism or stuff which in, endangers people's lives, I would say Alex Jones, for example, would be one example to me where by spewing his lies about Sandy Hook and imperiling the lives of the relatives of the, the poor kids who died. I don't think he should have a platform to do that and endanger their lives, personally. Um, so I think there is a line, and I think he's going to get there with a group of people which will be far more rounded politically, probably, than the, than the current leadership group at Twitter. No, I totally agree with you. I think... Uh, again, Elon Musk is very good at picking the right people to go to the right places. Um, yeah, hate speech on Twitter should not be there. Um, uh, maybe a different point of view, that can be there, you know, for the first time. Because the problem with Twitter is that they have been just, you know, for the left. And they ban people who's on the right. Like in my case, shadow ban, I work, I, I'm a conservative, uh, love this country. Um, they will do everything uh, uh, to uh, limit my speech, okay? Mm. But that doesn't happen on the left. I mean, they just totally let it go. I think what now, with Elon Musk taking over, it's going to be a lot, much more um, well-balanced as far as... Um, uh, who's on Twitter and what's who's what would saying you do? I've what? got to ask you, I, I know you don't want to talk about this in any depth, I completely understand why, because you have obviously a personal connection here, but uh, Kanye, you know, Ye West, who I interviewed last week, actually, in the US, you know, there's a, a big debate about whether he should be given social media platforms now. So setting aside your, the fact you obviously know him uh, through the family, what's, yeah. your view, what's your view about what well, he said yeah. and whether he should have a platform? First of all, uh, any anti-Semitic remarks uh, uh, should be totally condemned by everybody, no matter if it's on Twitter or wherever it is. So that's where I stand as far as... Um, and uh, that type of speech shouldn't be around. Yeah. I, that, yeah. To me, that is a line. That get, if that gets crossed, that, that should be it. Um, Caitlin, it's great to talk yeah. to you. I love you coming on the show. Please come back soon. You always talk a lot of sense. And I, I really right. appreciate it. It's always good to talk to you, Pierce. <laughs> Take care, Caleb.